first it was the 2019 NBA Draft, then it was the 2018, and now here we are continuing this series because y'all really love it, on to the 2017 NBA Draft. Now, 2017 was four years ago. Oh lord. I graduated high school four years ago. That is severely depressing. All that means is that we got a lot to cover. The 2017 NBA Draft at one point in time was compared to the historic, classic 2003 draft class. Off rip, one thing that I can say is that this is easily one of the more overhyped classes we've seen. But still, I can't discredit it. Here's your credit. Still a very solid, above average class if you ask me. Bro, we're about to go through a roller coaster of emotions right now with this draft class. There's been a lot of letdowns. There's been a lot a lot of surprises and also a lot of random tragedies as well but before I dive deep into my bag I have a couple announcements to make guess what boys next month July 9th to be specific is gonna be my birthday and what I usually be doing once in a while when I can is do a giveaway on my birthday I want to give back to y'all because y'all have given me so much in this very short life that I lived so here are going to be the rules all you have to do to enter this giveaway is of course Follow me on Instagram. I always tell you I'll do that for a reason. Go ahead and do that. That's your opportunity. Like all my pictures and also subscribe to my second channel, Yo Mojo, because that's where I'm doing a couple post game recaps. I'm talking about random NBA stuff. And also, all of those videos are not edited. It's just me, Mojo Raw, and Uncut. If you do that, follow my Instagram, like all of my pictures, and also subscribe to my second channel, Yo Mojo. Do those things right now. I'll be sending one of you lucky dudes any NBA jersey or maybe even CBA Chinese Basketball Association Shanghai Sarch jerseys if you want bro if you want a Zaza Pachulia dude uh, JaVel McGee a Faku Compiler from the Denver Nuggets uh soon to be Shanghai Shark Ben Simmons jersey like whatever you want I will get it for you just let me know send me your name and your address and I'll take care of you and also a quick side note I'm gonna be live streaming the NBA draft lottery come Tuesday night. I believe it's at 8 or something like that. Whatever time it is, bro, just know I'm going to be live on this channel and you can go ahead and watch it with me. So, let's get into the video. The number one overall draft pick back in 2017 was, of course, as we all know, Marco Fultz. Now, Marco Fultz, man, has had one of the more what what the f careers so far in the NBA. Man's was a killer back in college. He was compared to the likes of James Harden back in Washington, with the way he was able to create for himself and others, get to the rack, and also dish out insane passes. Marco Fultz was top tier, but. Oh dear, we did not see any of this coming. Of course, he was a killer in some league, doing all the things that every single NBA scout at the time predicted. It was a hit. It was a major W for the Philadelphia 76ers. They needed someone like this dearly because of moments like this in the making of this video, the 76ers just got eliminated. They needed someone like this to go ahead and alleviate pressure from Ben Simmons, from Joel Embiid, and also someone who could shoot the damn ball. And uh, once they got Marco Fult, something really wacky something really strange and something that has still not been addressed is Marco Fultz in the shooting wolves. Bro, he randomly, like, his shoulder blew out a flat tire. Nobody knows what happened to him, bro. Some people saying, like, bro, my man's Rusty Buckets, my close YouTube friend, you know what I'm saying, made a video back in 2018 or something like that, back when he was ugly. He's a cutie now. Saying that he got in a motorcycle accident and tore up his shoulder. Wild things like that. Other people like me are like, yo, he just probably has the yips, and he's gotten into his head when it comes to shooting the ball. Something that's very common. Whatever was wrong with him was really bad, and the 76ers could not use him or play him that much at all just because of how their roster was constructed. Two other star players already contradict each other's games. They don't need to be trying to force feed someone else into this off. What the Philadelphia 76ers ended up doing was trading him away to the Orlando Magic, which is a team that literally almost nobody watches. I can name you one Orlando Magic fan that I kinda know. Not kinda, I actually know him. But other than that, I've never seen a fan, bro. I'm so serious. Markel's two years as a Philadelphia 76er, he averaged eight points, three assists, shot 41% from the field, 26% from three, and 53% from the free throw line. Yeah, I feel really bad for Marco Fultz, but at the same time, I was really happy that he got a chance to go ahead and step to the side in the shadows and just do what he does without any type of obnoxious media members down his neck and questioning him continuously, spite lot on him. Oh, when is Marco Fultz coming back? Marco Fultz this, Marco Fultz that. You don't have to be in any headlines anymore, bro. He's in Orlando. Nobody watches Orlando basketball game. And him being in Orlando did him right because he was 
a different player coming into this NBA season. But the season before this one, he was also pretty good as well. He looked like a different player. He was hitting a lot of crossovers, using his big body to get to wherever he wanted on the court, and also he had a nice mid-range jumper. He averaged a solid 12 points, three rebounds, five assists, on 46% shooting from the field and 73% from the line. That is great, massive improvement, and he took that and capitalized on it and took all this momentum to this NBA season. And Sadly, he blew out his ACL in just eight games. And 22-year-old Markel Fultz averaged 13 points, shooting 39% from the field, but I'm gonna bypass all that because he put up great performances and just also had really bad ones. Markel Fultz is right now recovering from his ACL and preparing to go ahead and make his career as, I don't know, a bench player, maybe a starter in Orlando. Their guard rotation is kind of confusing and also kind of competitive too. They got RJ Hampton, Cole Anthony, and now of course they've been had Markel Fultz. Has he had a disappointing, underwhelming, and confusing career? Yes. And did the title bust be placed above his name? For sure, it should have been placed there. But just because he's a bust doesn't mean that he can't be a useful player in the NBA. Speaking of bust, someone that a lot of people started to call a bust, but all of a sudden now are not so brave and bold about their claims is the number two overall pick, Alonzo Ball. Now, if you know the slightest thing about Alonzo Ball, you know that he was all over the media back when he was, what, 17, 18, even 19 years old. Those Chino Hill teams were bringing a lot of viewers and had a lot of clout attached to the name. He was an LA boy, an LA boy who was putting up numbers back in high school alongside of his brothers and just doing a lot of historical things. He went to UCLA, carried on his terrific play, and even had the eyes of LA and Magic Johnson feasting, waiting to get their hands on. Now we all know how that turned out. It didn't turn out well. He got traded within the first year, year and a half to the New Orleans Pelicans. I remember watching Lonzo's very first game as a Laker and he got completely, I don't like to curse on my channel, but bro, he got by Patrick Beverly. He got pushed to the ground, Patrick Beverly looked upon him and all this stuff, but it was just a very, very sad sight. He looks very bad. And the reason why he looked worse than he actually was, was because of all the talk that his father, LeVar, did back in the day. And these days, nobody talks or cares about LeVar Ball in 2021. He tricked all y'all now and took all y'all's attention, energy, and some of y'all's money. Who the hell bought ZO2s? And who was buying their big baller brand merch? If you have that, bro, you're an embarrassment to society, bro. Like, what is wrong with you? Anyways, nobody pays attention to LeVar Ball anymore, but not only LeVar Ball put pressure on him, Magic Johnson also did too. Magic was putting the biggest expectations on him. I remember when Lonzo was getting drafted and they had like some interview or whatever, some rookie interview. Man said I can see your jersey up on the rafters alongside mine or something like that. I expect to see your number retire. That is insanely stupid to say to any rookie. It don't matter how good he is, it don't matter about none of that, bro. That's just something that you don't say to a 19, 20, 21 year old kid. And he said that. These days you can find Lonzo Ball four years later on the New Orleans Pelicans posting a record breaking, not record breaking, well, for him record breaking, he's supposed to be career high, he completely transformed his shot, he's a better free throw shooter, he's still good at defense, that's something that was viewed as a weakness back in the day, back in Chino Hills and UCLA, but that's actually a strength of his. Now he's one of the more coveted and more sought after assets in the NBA today, depending on what the hell the Pelicans want to do with it. So yeah, that's Lonzo Ball. Third overall pick, Jason Tatum, is looking like, or he is not looking like, he's been looking like he should have been the number one overall pick. He was supposed to be a Philadelphia 76ers. It's so crazy that I'm remembering this. The Philadelphia 76ers traded up and the Boston Celtics traded back because they knew Jason Tatum was gonna fall back and they just, Danny Ainge was working magic. Anyways, Jason Tatum is the best player out of this draft class and I don't think I need to say too much about him. In his rookie year, bro, he dunked on LeBron James in the Eastern Conference Final. He's been putting up crazy numbers in the playoffs. This man had a 50 ball against the Brooklyn Nets in order for his team to not get swept. They still got Jonathan Swift and all that stuff because his team is poo-poo, it's buns, hot garbage. But 
but he did his thing, put up numbers, and did it every single thing that he could. He is the prototypical franchise guy that every single team would love to have. He's a big 6'8", 6'9", wing, maybe even 6'10", bro, who has great range, plays elite defense, and has elite handles and can score from literally anywhere on the basketball court. You can't go wrong with Jason Tatum, bro. He's just simply that dude of this draft class. He's the face of this draft class. The fourth overall draft pick was another small forward who I barely remember is Josh Jackson. Now, Josh Jackson went to Kansas, and he originally was picked by the Phoenix Suns. I remember it now. Man's hopped from team to team to team as of late. And he was originally picked by the Phoenix Suns. Now, to explain his career back in Phoenix, he was really inconsistent and it's been a lot of turmoil. I remember stories, storylines coming up about him, how he ran away from the cop and was like smoking weed or whatever the case may be back in Miami. It was that happened like three years ago, bro. Super wild. But his actual playing career back in Phoenix was quite disappointing and of course it was the same storyline for him. He just could not shoot the damn ball and he had zero consistency. Super athletic, he was a good slasher and all that, but he had his troubles on the court that he could not ever get over. These days I believe you can find him in Detroit and uh, he's been actually a pretty good player for Detroit this past season. Okay, maybe good as an overstatement, but he's averaging like 12, 13 points on 41% shooting from the field on Detroit. One of the highlights, one of the most important moments of Josh Jackson's career didn't even involve him playing basketball. It involved him being freshly drafted, possibly traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers because the Cavs were in talks with the Phoenix Suns when it comes to trading Kyrie Irving and the Cleveland Cavaliers wanted to go ahead and trade Kyrie to the Phoenix Suns, but the Suns were not budging on Josh Jackson. That's just another little minor thing that a lot of people don't remember, but I'm throwing it back in your faces, bro. The Phoenix Suns could have had Kyrie Irving. They've made so many mistakes in the past, but if, look, bro, the Phoenix Suns are doing their thing right now and nobody can complain, but these things need to be talked about. Anyways, that was Josh Jackson. No one really cares. No one wants to talk about Josh Jackson anymore. Maybe you do. I certainly don't. Anyways, the fifth overall pick is the second, or my bad, the third best player out of this draft class and the best point guard out of this draft class, De'Aaron Fox. I'm sorry to say, bro, but De'Aaron Fox is going to be, I made a video about this literally a year ago. De'Aaron Fox is going to be the most underrated point guard in the West, simply because of the type of guys who are ahead of him. Luka Doncic, of course, you got your Steph Curry, your Damian Lillard of the world and all that stuff, but Luka Doncic and John Martin are literally sucking away every single piece of attention and shine that De'Aaron Fox could possibly get, bro. He's playing for the Sacramento Kings and Luka Walton. And why does he even have a job? I really don't know. But De'Aaron Fox is one of the most, if not the most athletic point guard out there. If he's physically gifted, he's like 6'4", he's super speedy, he has a good handle to him, he's an elite finisher at the rim, and also he plays good defense. This past season, he averaged a saw 25 points per game and 7 assists on 47% shooters from the field and 72% from three. Those numbers right there are all-star numbers. And you probably didn't even know that he posted those type of numbers, but my friend, he definitely did. Nobody just talks about it because he's in Sacramento. Free Darren Fox. Sixth overall pick is Jonathan Isaac. Jonathan Isaac was one of those players I remember him calling coming out of college where someone was like, I'm not gonna say his name because you know what I'm saying shout out to him, I respect him. But a lot of people thought that this man was gonna be the next Kevin Durant, and I made a whole nother video talking about how a lot of people thought he was gonna be Kevin Durant, but he's a completely different monster. Just how talented Kevin Durant is on offense is exactly how talented Jonathan Isaac is on defense. He is insane, he is elite, and he has a potential to be the best defender in the NBA one day if he can actually stay healthy. That's the only X factor for him. He's had hip problems, and he just, I think he tore his ACL back in the bubble or something like that and of course he wasn't allowed to play this entire season at all but that's Jonathan Isaac he's at home recovering reading his Bible probably or something like that that's just the type of character Jonathan Isaac is. The seventh overall pick was a super interesting one that is Larry Markin now originally the Minnesota Timberwolves had this pick but they go ahead and trade it away to the Chicago Bulls because that was a part of the Jimmy Butler trade. If you didn't know, now you know. I'm over here bringing you all this information, bro. How Chicago fans have viewed Larry Markin and then compared to now is completely different. Chicago fans, long story short, used to love him. He showed so much potential in his rookie year. He was nice physical he was shooting threes he was actually a good shooter he did so many things off the ball and because of all those great things people started of course calling him whenever you see a tall white guy who can shoot they called him the next dirt they called him the next porzingis and 
I'm not gonna lie to you, I fed into those, into that narrative. Back in 2018 when I was a pee-weedy little channel, I was saying this man was gonna be better than Porzingis. And at this rate right now, bro, Porzingis is not that good either. So I don't know what that says. Anyways, Larry Marketing these days is hated by Chicago fans and they cannot wait to get rid of him. And yeah, that's just Larry Marketing. I can't say too much. First year in the league, he averaged like what? 15 points per game, then the second year, 18 points per game. And then all of a sudden injuries started the living hell out of him and there were consistency issues he had to deal with coach Jim Boylan who was the worst head coach in the NBA for quite a while then he had confidence issues and now he just doesn't know how to play basketball that very well the eighth overall pick in the 2017 NBA draft is a hilarious pick man's got so much Giannis comparisons, and I smell the baloney from a mile away. As soon as Frank Nilekina was drafted by the New York Knicks, ESPN put up a card. There's some, I don't know how they get these numbers and like find out these probabilities, but Frank Nilekina had the highest bust potential. It was like 99, 99% or 97% or something wild like that. Just absolutely disrespecting him from day one, and I ain't gonna lie. Whatever those probability numbers were, bro, give them to me. Teach me how to do that for me so I can get better with my draft videos. Also, y'all, Again, y'all gotta tune in this week to my channel because I'm gonna be posting so many draft videos. So go ahead and hit that mojo notification bell, notification bell if you're lame. And uh, yeah, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. But anyways, Frank Nilekina is just a bust and I really don't wanna be talking about him anymore. Anyways, ninth overall pick in the 2017 NBA draft was Dennis Smith Jr. Now, Dennis Smith Jr. played for North Carolina State and I've been seeing his videos and highlights on Instagram, Twitter, and all that stuff for quite a while now because he is still to this day, I think, one of, if not, the best point guard dunker in the entire NBA. Now, he's not good at anything else right now. Last time I checked, bro, he was playing on the New York Knicks, and then he got shipped off to the Detroit Pistons. He posted, like, a trip double, and then all of a sudden, he, like, disappeared from the face of this earth. I don't know where he's at, bro. I honestly don't know, bro. Someone, does someone know? Help me. I know that he'd be hanging out with J. Cole from time to time, but other than that, I just know. The 10th overall pick in 2017 was Zach Collins. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna say anything about Zach Collins because he is Zach Collins. What the hell do you want me to say? I can say something though about the 11th overall pick in Malik Monk. Malik Monk, I love watching him play. He's a great bench player. I don't think he's gonna be a star or anything crazy like that. Back in college, he looked like one. He was an automatic bucket, a certified bucket for Kentucky back in the day. I remember he posted what? I'm not sure how many points. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was like a 30 and maybe 40. I don't remember, but he posted some crazy numbers against UCLA, I believe, back when there was like a championship game. I don't know what it was, but he, but he was a phenomenal college prospect and player. And Sadly, that just wasn't able to translate into the NBA because of multiple things like size, you know what I'm saying, and his consistency and all that stuff. These days in the NBA, you can catch him chilling with the Charlotte Hornets, catching lots from LaMelo Ball, Devontae Graham, and finally actually staying out of trouble and no longer doing like crack cocaine. That was in his system, that was something super wild, bro, but he's good now. The 13th and 14th overall pick in the 2017 NBA draft are some of the best players out of this class. Easily the top five best players out of this class. One of them is Donovan Mitchell, an absolute steal for the Utah Jazz. I don't know where they would be at if they never landed Donovan Mitchell. They landed Donovan Mitchell as soon as Gordon Hayward decided to go ahead and leave for the Boston Celtics. <sighs> I'm yelling, bro. Y'all gotta go ahead and run this video up in likes for me, bro. I be asking for like five, six, seven hundred likes. I don't think that's too much to ask for. Donovan Mitchell has proven that he can be that guy. He's had so many prolific playoff games, so many memorable historic playoff games. Man dropped like 50, 40, and super just insane numbers that you would have never expected this little 6'2", 6'1", guard coming from Louisville to drop. Another important note that I want to say about Donovan Mitchell is that I remember that he wasn't even initially going to enlist in the NBA draft until I believe it was either Dwayne Wade or CP3 telling him that, yo, like, you're good enough to go ahead and be drafted. Imagine if one of those pros never told him that, bro, then he would, I don't know, bro. I'm so happy that one of those all-time greats gave him that information because now he's making millions, chilling, and he's taking care of his family and also taking care of those weirdly weird races you talk. That's the 13th overall pick, I believe, and the 14th overall pick from this draft class was Bam Adebayo. He's another player that literally nobody saw coming. Anyways, the 14th overall pick in the 2017 NBA draft class is kind of similar to Donovan Mitchell in terms of nobody saw this coming. Nobody saw the playmaking and the jump shot and all that stuff coming. Bam Adebayo is the prototypical center that every single team would love to have. He does every single thing that you would 
need from your center in the year 2021. He can, he can protect the paint, he can defend the perimeter, he's a good playmaker, he can run the offense. Oh, and also he has a developing jump shot, a good jump shot. Bam Adebayo continues to surprise me and shock me as each and every season goes by. He was also a first time all-star and also so was Donovan Mitchell and Jason Tatum. That's just something really noticeable to throw out there right now. This draft class already has three all-stars and it's just been four years. Shout out to them. The 19th overall draft pick out of the 2017 NBA draft class was John Collins and John Collins came straight out of Wake Forest and he's also another player who was actually kind of surprising and pretty good during his rookie sophomore year third year in the NBA now he's in his fourth year in the NBA on the way to the Eastern Conference final playing some great defense for the Atlanta Hawks of course bringing that energy as usual and just being a really good teammate and just person to the city of Atlanta shout out to John Collins I'm so happy we have that man and hopefully we can retain now here's where things get kind of effed up in this video the next part that we're going to be talking about is Harry Giles now if you know anything about Harry Giles you know that he was set to be the number one overall pick just two years a year before this NBA draft class but he went through some cataclysmic injuries knee injuries specifically several times sometimes on the same knee Harry Giles was born and destined to be that dude he was so athletic as a four in high school and all those AAU tournaments that he played in but he sadly just was never able to reach that type of potential and have that opportunity because his knees were broke as hell bro so instead of going into college and putting up great numbers and possibly winning a championship he went to college put up super mid mediocre numbers didn't even play that much got drafted with the 20th overall pick i believe for to the sacramento kings and the sacramento kings decided to let him go and he got picked up this past season by the portland trailblazers where he's just bench warming and just waiting for his time to shine and uh, yeah, that's Harry Job. Big shout out to guys like OG Anunobi and Jared Allen. They're on the way to get massive bags as well. Some of the best defenders out of this draft class. Jared Allen is now on the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Cleveland Cavaliers have now found their center for the future. And OG Anunobi has been the future for the Toronto Raptors and I think he's finally embracing this role. Hopefully he can start scoring more points and being more aggressive on offense to sure up the Toronto Raptors future right now. Caleb Swanigan was a 26th overall pick back in the 2017 NBA draft class and when he got drafted he got so many comparisons to Paul Millsap. Paul Millsap was an all-star back in the Atlanta Hawks days I believe and maybe he was in the Utah Jazz games days I don't really know but Paul Millsap was an actually quality player who could shoot pass rebound defend play make all that good stuff so when those type of things about Paul Millsap and, and hearing them about Caleb Swanigan kind of intrigued me hella as an NBA fan I'm like yo maybe this dude can be kind of good for the Portland Trailblazers but uh that just never happened to be the case in fact this dude fell the hell up he, he is so down bad right now that just a couple months ago in the NBA world, news broke that this man was going to court for multiple serious charges that involved weapons and also some drugs. And also some pictures leaked of him as well, walking in, in or out of court, and he was really out of shape. But I'm not gonna sit here and judge too hard because man dealt with some extracurricular activities and just serious real life things. So that's Kale Swanigan. I could talk more and more about him, but I really don't want to cry on camera. Anyways, the 28th or 27th overall pick in the 2017 NBA draft was Kyle Kuzma. Easily one of the most or the most overrated player out of this draft class. People were saying for the longest, for at least two years or maybe two and a half years that Kyle Kuzma was a better player than Jason Tatum. I don't know why Lakers fans were so obsessed with Jason Tatum and comparing him and be like, ah, yeah, we got the better rookie. Bro, Kyle Kuzma was like 22, 23 when he got drafted. Jason Tatum's like 23 right now, and it's been four years later. Like, you lost this argument, this debate by a long mile. Four years later, here we are. Kyle Kuzma is over here fighting for his next contract, getting what, paid 10, 11, 12 million dollars by the Lakers, and also looking to go ahead and possibly, rumors say, to look for a bigger role on some other new team, a bigger opportunity. No one's gonna give that to you, Kyle Kuzman. You can't really shoot, you can't pass, you can't drive, you can't do none of that. You're not you're not a good NBA player. You're super average, if you ask me. So that's where Kyle Kuzma is at. He went from averaging like 16, 18 points per game or 20, whatever the case may be, in his rookie season. But a lot of those points were empty stats. Players like that are empty stats, and that's just a great example. Once you put winning players and also a winning system around Kyle Kuzma, 
he doesn't know how to contribute that well. He knows how to play losing basketball. Winning basketball is not really his forte. Some of the steals out of this draft class were Derek White and also another Laker, Josh Hart. And these days you can find Derek White on the San Antonio Spurs being locked up again. Of course he was dealing with injuries and stuff like that so he really can showcase what he could do. He's gotten noticed a good amount of times enough at least in the NBA community for his great defense, great decision making and also his nice shooting ability. Mans went to like some chef school or something like that and made it to the league. He's had a great color story and NBA fans are just waiting to see him get help. Josh Hart is one of the more valued and one of the greater picks from this class because of how good he is at his damn job. He's a 6'5", maybe 6'4", insanely good rebounding shooting guard. Those are pretty good shooter and has a great hustle. Like any any contending team would love to have someone like him. A couple of noticeable players from this draft class who got selected from the second round was guys like Monte Morris. Man just putting on for the Denver Nuggets right now. He's Ugh, I don't know if I'm ready to say this right now, but I'm gonna say it right now. He's a starting caliber point guard, and the Denver Nuggets have that on their bench. They're gonna be scary good once everyone's healthy. But yeah, Monte Morris is doing that. He just got paid from the Denver Nuggets, so no one can go ahead and touch him or trade for him for now. And uh, another player that's kind of noticeable, I guess, is Semi Ojale. He's been there. Oh, and how can I forget the most fearless dude, the dude who got beef? I swear to God, with every single star player in the NBA is Dylan Brooks. Nobody likes him. He talks way too much, but I respect it because he talks way too much and some of the times he backs it up. He's a good player. He plays good defense. His shooting is kind of inconsistent, but where he was drafted at, he's made the most out of his NBA career and gets nothing but W's from me, regardless of how Memphis Grizzlies fans feel about it. Just watch me look back at the 2017 NBA draft four years ago. Yeah, I appreciate you for coming over here on my channel to see what I'm talking about. Remember what I told you about my giveaway. Follow me on Instagram. I'm also on my second channel. Like all my pictures on my Instagram. And also, yeah, again, subscribe to my second channel. So you can be entered to get whatever jersey you want, bro. Shanghai Sharks. I heard they got a deal for Kyle Kuzma and Ben Simmons, bro. Two in one garbage deal. If you want that, bro, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I appreciate you for coming over here and just taking your time to go ahead and watch me talk about basketball that is insanely dope for you to do outside of everything that i just said if you can do one thing and one thing only for me and also the greater and the betterment of you i just want you to make sure that you're great until then i'll get right with you no way no way when i couldn't get a play no hope i ain't have a place to stay i got the work made it sir free the way so my girl who ever thought